reward for information leading to the arrest of Jasmine Barnes' killer is now up to $100,000. That money has been raised by journalist Sean King, and police have released a sketch of a possible suspect, along with the surveillance video of the truck the killer was driving. He's her uncle isn't a Boy Scout. In fact, he's in jail right now on a long list of felonies and got out of prison just before Hurricane Harvey. Sean King did not respond to repeated requests for comment. Haley, who fears for her uncle and her family's safety, wants this to spread too. He is innocent of this terrible crime. And it is going to be justice for her, and I feel it in the bottom of my heart. It's going to be justice for her because there's too many people out here looking for this man. There's too much going on, man. Like I say, and we going to find no matter what car we have to turn, no matter what rock we got to go under, we going to find you, man. A reward of $100,000 is being offered for information leading to that suspect's arrest. Jasmine's mother also said she believes Houston, all... Houston, Texas, December 30th, 2018. A quiet morning shattered by gunfire. Seven-year-old Jasmine Barnes, full of life and dreams, was gunned down in a drive-by shooting. Her tragic death sent shockwaves through the community and sparked a nationwide outcry. What happened that morning? And why was an innocent child caught in the crossfire of a crime that stunned the nation? This is the story of Jasmine Barnes, a case of mistaken identity and the relentless pursuit of justice. It was a routine Sunday morning. Jasmine Barnes, her mother, LaPortia Washington, and her three sisters were heading out for breakfast. Suddenly, a red pickup truck pulled alongside their car and without warning, bullets tore through the vehicle. In a matter of seconds, seven-year-old Jasmine lay lifeless, her family forever changed. The immediate aftermath was one of confusion and heartbreak. Initial reports suggested the shooter was a white male in a red truck, leading many to believe the attack was racially motivated. The reward for information leading to the arrest of Jasmine Barnes' killer is now up to $100,000. That money has been raised by journalist Sean King, and police have released a sketch of a possible suspect, along with the surveillance video of the truck the killer was driving. He's wanted for shooting the seven-year-old as she rode in her mother's car last Sunday. The little girl's mother was also wounded in the attack. Mother described the suspect as being pale with blue eyes. Some are expressing concern that this could be a hate crime. Uh a rise on, in hate crimes. The FBI just released a report about a rise in hate crimes. Uh, this particular area of Houston uh, is known for a racial element. Um, and so all of those factors playing together, it says it, it, that is a consideration that we should at least take on, but there's no confirmation. The community was in shock and the media attention was intense. Vigils were held and the cry for justice grew louder. As investigators worked tirelessly to piece together what happened, the case took a significant turn. A $100,000 reward for information brought forward new leads. The breakthrough came when a tip led police to two suspects, revealing a dark and unexpected twist in the case. The tip led them to Eric Black Jr., a man with a record almost as long as his excuses. Mr. Black has acknowledged his role in Jasmine's murder. We've also received information that this involves a second individual as well. He confessed to driving the car, but of course, pointed the finger at someone else for the actual shooting. Enter Larry Woodruff, the man allegedly holding the gun and the brains of the operation. Eric Black Jr. and Larry Woodruff were arrested and charged with capital murder. The shocking revelation was that the shooting was not racially motivated, but a tragic case of mistaken identity tied to gang violence. Black confessed to driving the vehicle and Woodruff was identified as the shooter. You know it's serious when courtroom artists have to get their pencils out. Black and Woodruff were in deep and the charges reflected the gravity of their actions. Capital murder is not exactly a slap on the wrist, especially when a child's life is lost. The public was outraged and rightly so. How could something so senseless happen? Jasmine's death galvanized the community. Rallies and vigils became common sights,
and the call for action against gun violence grew louder. The family, though devastated, became vocal advocates for change, urging the community to come together to prevent further tragedies. The legal battle that followed was intense. Both Black and Woodruff faced capital murder charges, with the prosecution presenting a strong case based on Black's confession and other evidence. In the courtroom, it was clear that justice for Jasmine was the priority. The prosecution laid out a compelling narrative while the defense, well, they did their best. But with such overwhelming evidence, the path to justice seemed clear. In the end, the jury found both men guilty. Justice was served, but the pain remained. For Jasmine's family, there was no bringing her back, but knowing that those responsible were held accountable offered a measure of closure. Jasmine Barnes's story is a somber reminder of the innocent lives lost to violence. While her family and community continue to grieve, they also fight for change, ensuring Jasmine's memory lives on. In the end, justice was served, but the pain remains. This is the story of innocence lost and the enduring hope for a safer future.